data in its own form and we think is valuable, but in reality it is not valuable. It is not valuable because you have to refine it and you have to process it. Um, you have to generate the insights, whether they are predictive insights, prescriptive insights, or just root cause analysis. But ultimately, you need that data to be refined in order to generate actions that will lead to an impact for your business or your organization. Now, um, oh, I've just realized I've got the screen there. That's quite useful. Um, the philosophy at Spark Beyond is really to start from the end and work backwards to data. And in order to get the right answer, one must first ask the right question. What does that mean? That means we start with a problem and we work our way backwards. So my problem is sales. What are the drivers of sales? OK, weather. But what is it about weather? Is it the rain? Is it snow? Is it, is it the temperature? OK, so it's rain. But what is it about rain? Is it two days of rain that affect my sales or three days? Is it lots of rain? Where's the threshold? And every question leads to another question. Now, humans are pretty good uh, at working out the kind of strategic level, hey, what's my problem? What am I trying to solve? Um, but the trouble is, as we work through that pyramid and work through towards the, 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 the really nitty uh, gritty questions at the end of that, that, that line, we get worse and worse. Why? Because of the, uh, the cognitive bottleneck and our, our, our problem with low dimensionality. Now imagine a machine that generates millions of ideas in minutes, discovers patterns, connects the dots, and asks the questions one would never think to ask. And not as a black box, but as a glass box. I read that slide because it's at the core, obviously, of Spark Beyond and the next generation of artificial intelligence and its application in organizations. In 2013, Saggy and Ron, our founders, um, were sat in Netanya, I believe, um, and uh, had asked the key question, which was if Google had crawled the web for text why and organized it, why had nobody done this with code? There's 100 billion lines of code in GitHub alone, and there's lots of other repositories out there. Why had nobody indexed it, organized it, and, and created a library of unique code blocks? which is, of course, what they ended up doing. And over a period of six months, they created uh, the start of a, a very, very comprehensive library of all the code that had been written uh, in the world. And they enriched it. They built the metadata around it. Uh, uh, this, this code block is particularly good if you've got a name in a data set or a place in a data set or a timestamp or whatever. And the next step was, of course, how do we apply this library of data? And they realized that in the world of data science, it was incredibly valuable because what they could do is take any building block, string it together with other build building blocks, and what effectively create a question. So in a data set like a, a weather data set, trying to understand sales, it could ask the question, for example, is it rain that affects the sales? Is it three millimeters of rain or four millimeters of rain? And it could constantly ask these questions. And they then built the algorithms to apply this library of, of code to data sets. And to, to be able to do that at very, very, very high velocity, so in the order of a million questions per minute. Now, what they built is the, the raw engine, the ability to ask questions. And of course, being data scientists and being technical individuals, they couldn't help themselves but kind of go upstream and downstream from that and start building out a platform. So upstream, it's the ability to connect data sets uh, very easily to, to the engine. Uh, there's hundreds of data sets uh, that are openly available that are useful to our, our, our client organizations, uh, weather being one of them, of course, but you've got Wikipedia, you've got census data, demographic data, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, the ability to plug in uh, organizational data sets with the client organizations. And then downstream of that, of course, once you've got your insights, you either want to manipulate them, visualize them, understand why exactly am I being told in order to take an action off it, or you want to build a model. Um, and of course, the modeling aspect of data science today is quite commoditized, so you, there are hundreds of models out there, so we've just plugged them all in. And what we've ended up with is a, uh, a, an end-to-end -end problem solving platform that allows a user, a business person, uh, probably an analytical in, in, in by background, to, to understand what is going on in data. Now, the outputs that they get 
from uh, such a platform, from this engine, is obviously the, 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 the root cause um, data patterns that exist in your data. But of course, it, you can turn that into predictive models and you can turn that into prescriptive models. Um, the machine, by its own right, is creative. It's asking questions independently of the human being. And therefore, it's coming up with, with ideas to test in the data completely independently. It is exhaustive in that it is asking a million questions a minute. So if you let it run for 30 minutes, you're talking about huge amounts of, of data being looked at and being tested. Um, and of course, it's dynamic because it's independent of the individual. It can be powered by electricity. You can let it run all night, all, day, all week, et cetera. And so if you're wanting uh, a daily report, a minute by minute report, or a weekly report on what's going on in your, in your field, um, the machine will just uh, uh, automatically give you that. So um, it's, uh, it's a problem-solving platform. Operationally, it has a, a pretty uh, a transformational impact on a data science or an analytical team. Um, it collapses the time to value. So a data science team can work through problems that much faster, which means that the cost of failure is lower. You can try more things. You can look at different uh, uh, problems. And of course, your data scientist, your analyst, uh, and your business person is no longer thinking about, I need to test the weather, and I need to test the rain, whether the rain affects it. They are now talking about search space. I'm going to give the machine this search space. And my intuition, to, to come back to uh, um, uh, Alan's point earlier, is that what affects my sales are the following data sets. And I'm going to give that search space to the machine. And I'm going to let the machine do the work, the lower order work. And so I, as a human being, am elevated to think more broadly about the problem. Um, so that's the operational value. Um, but in reality, I, 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 uh, I came across Sagi and Ron about a year and a half ago. And I joined Spot Beyond for three reasons. Um, number one, um, what an amazing team, some amazing people. Um, and I'll leave that to one side. We can talk about that later. Number two was that I, I had a, an epiphany. Philosophically, what Saggy and Ron had done is to automate a, 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 a core cognitive function of the human brain. And this is game changing. So when we look at the history of AI over 50 years, I am persuaded, I am absolutely sure, that what Sag and Ron will be one of the breakthroughs that have happened uh, in, in that history. And there's a long way to go, but, but the ability for a machine to, to ask the questions independently of human being and effectively having, having the same cognitive function as a, as a human analyst is utterly phenomenal. Now, uh, the other reason I joined the company is because Sagi and Ron and the team they built around them are phenomenal individuals. Uh, and they recognize the power that they have in their hands through the, the machine they built. And so we have the opportunity as a company to do great things in the world. And I think we are all aligned with a, an amazing mission that we truly believe in. Um, and therefore, we work with client organizations and, 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 and um, on a number of problems, and ultimately we want to have a, a positive impact over the course of the next 10, 15, 20, 30 years. Does it work? Well, um, we have worked in uh, over 20 industries all over the world. Um, this is my show off slide. Um, and um, we've grown completely organically from word of mouth. We'd grown entirely from people telling each other about us, which is an amazing, uh, an amazing thing. Um, and, uh, but today we're 160, we're global, we're, um, uh, and we're growing incredibly rapidly. Um, we're massively committed to uh, spending a, a very large proportion of our time on, on um, social impact as well. Uh, so beyond the day-to-day -day problems that our clients face, but, but into things like sustainable agriculture, cancer research, prison violence, and so on. Um, that's Spark Beyond.